Have you ever been mesmerized by a building that seems like a fantasy turned into stone and mortar? Welcome to the enchanting world of Antony Gaudi, where architecture isn't just about buildings, but about dreams, nature, and art dancing together. Today, we're embarking on an extraordinary journey through Gaudi's most impressive legacies, each a masterpiece that redefines the skyline of Barcelona. Intrigued? Then, join us on this visual feast, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more captivating stories. Let's unveil the magic behind Gaudi's creations and discover how they continue to inspire awe and wonder. Sagrada Familia Let's talk about the Sagrada Familia, a project so massive it makes century-long marriages look like brief flings. This basilica, soaring skyward in Barcelona, is Gaudi's magnum opus that's still a work in progress. Imagine starting a jigsaw puzzle in 1882 and not finishing it until 2026. That's commitment. Gaudi, the man with more patience than a saint, took over the project in 1883 and dedicated over 40 years of his life to it. The design? A breathtaking blend of Gothic and Art Nouveau styles, with 18 spires representing the 12 apostles, the Virgin Mary, the four evangelists, and of course, Jesus Christ. It's like nature and religion had a baby, and it's gorgeous. And here's a fun fact. Only one facade was completed when Gaudi passed away in 1926. Casa Mila. Now, let's stroll over to Casa Mila, affectionately dubbed La Pedrera, or the Stone Quarry. This name isn't just for kicks. The building literally looks like a quarry. Built from 1906 to 1912, this isn't just a building. It's like Gaudi took a chisel and sculpted a giant rock into a residence. The facade undulates like waves, and there's not a straight line in sight. Gaudi was clearly not a fan of rulers. The roof is a surreal landscape of chimneys and ventilation towers that look more like sculptures than functional structures. And here's a twist, the locals initially didn't like it. Too radical, they said, but now? It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a major tourist attraction. Inside, it's a cultural hub, hosting exhibitions that make art enthusiasts go wild. Park Ghoul. Next stop, Park Ghoul, a place where Gaudi seemingly asked, what if Mother Nature was an architect? Originally designed as a posh housing estate, the project was a bit of a flop. Only two houses were built, but Gaudi didn't let that dampen his spirits. He turned it into a public park, and oh boy, what a park it is. It's like walking into a whimsical wonderland. There are serpentine benches covered in colorful mosaics that are perfect for a quirky photo shoot. The main terrace, with its panoramic view of Barcelona, is the park's crowning jewel. But it's not just pretty tiles and views. Gaudi's genius is in how he integrated the park with the natural landscape. The man was eco-friendly before it was cool. In 1984, UNESCO gave it a thumbs up and declared it a World Heritage Site. Truly, it's a fantasy world where nature and art dance a beautiful tango. Casa Botlo. Welcome to Casa Botlo, also known as the House of Bones. And no, it's not a Halloween-themed attraction. Completed in 1906, this building looks like it jumped right out of a fantasy novel. Gaudi took a rather plain building and gave it a facelift that would make any plastic surgeon green with envy. The facade resembles a calm sea, with balconies that look like skulls, hence the spooky nickname. Don't even get me started on the roof, it's shaped like the back of a dragon. Inside, there's no straight line to be found, Gaudi was clearly allergic to them. The light well, colored in shades of blue tiles, ensures that even the gloomiest day feels sunny inside. Situated in the heart of Barcelona, it's not just a building, it's a statement piece that yells, look at me, and rightly so, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a testament to Gaudi's genius where architecture dances with imagination. Church of Colonia Ghoul Next up, let's visit the Church of Colonia Ghoul, Gaudi's I'm Not Finished Yet masterpiece. Begun in 1908, this church was supposed to be for the workers of a nearby industrial estate. Talk about a fancy workplace perk. But here's the twist, it was never completed. Money ran out, and what we have now is essentially the crypt, but what a crypt it is. It's like Gaudi was playing Jenga with architectural norms. The arches inside are a marvel, bending in ways that make you wonder if Gaudi was part architect, part wizard. The crypt is adorned with whimsical shapes and innovative designs that make you feel like you've stepped into another world. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and rightly so. 
This incomplete church is a lesson in making the most out of a tight budget and a reminder that sometimes the journey is just as important as the destination. Episcopal Palace of Astorga Leaving the comfort zone of Catalonia, we find ourselves at the Episcopal Palace of Astorga, a hidden Gaudi gem. Started in 1889, this palace is like Gaudi's road trip outside his usual stomping ground. But plot twist, he left the project in 1893 after some disagreements. Even geniuses have their bad days. The palace looks like a cross between a fairy tale castle and a fortress, with Gaudi's distinctive touch on its facade and interiors. Though others finished it, the building screams Gaudi from miles away with its whimsical shapes and intricate designs. It's a bit of a dark horse among Gaudi's works, not as famous as his Barcelona masterpieces, but just as deserving of a tip of the hat. Nestled in the province of Leon, this palace is like finding a rare Pokémon, unexpected but totally worth the discovery. Gull Palace Step into the Gull Palace, and you're stepping into history, Gaudi's history, to be exact. This isn't just any old palace, it's one of his first major projects, where he started to flex his architectural muscles. Built for Eusebi Gul, his main man and patron, this palace is like an architectural playground where Gaudi experimented with different styles and techniques. It's nestled in the bustling streets of Barcelona, yet once you step inside, it's like entering a different world. The palace is filled with innovative design elements, like a central hall with a parabolic dome, creating an echo effect that was probably Gaudi's version of a party trick. The ornate iron gates, intricate ceilings, and colorful tiles are like a sneak peek into Gaudi's brain. Now a World Heritage Site, it's not just a building, it's a celebration of creativity and a big high five to innovation. Casa de los Botines Now, let's zoom over to Leon, where Casa de los Botines stands as a monument to Gaudi's versatility. This building was whipped up in just a year. Talk about being efficient. Casa de los Botines is like Gaudi saying, hey, I can do different. It's a blend of Gothic and modernist styles with a touch of medieval flair. Think Game of Thrones meets the Jetsons. The facade features four impressive towers and statues of St. George slaying a dragon, because why not add a bit of drama? Unlike his other works, this building blends in more with its surroundings, showing that Gaudi could play it cool and still leave his mark. It's a testament to his adaptability and a reminder that good design doesn't always have to shout, sometimes it can just confidently whisper. Casa Calvet Casa Calvet is like Gaudi's undercover project. It's the Clark Kent of his works, unassuming on the outside, but with a touch of superhero on the inside. Built between 1898 and 1900, this building is Gaudi playing it cool in the urban landscape of Barcelona. It's more conservative compared to his other flamboyant works, but don't let that fool you. Peek inside, and you'll see Gaudi's signature style in the curves and intricate details. The facade, with its symmetrical design, might blend with its neighbors, but it still has those Gaudi touches, like a whisper of whimsy among the shouts of the city. It's his way of showing that he can be versatile, adapting his wild imagination to fit a more restrained brief. Casa Calvet is Gaudi on a leash, but even then, his genius peeks through. Casa Weekends Last on our Gaudi tour is Casa Weekends, his starter pack into the world of architectural fame. This was one of his first major works, and it's like he was already running before he learned to walk. Initially built as a private residence between 1883 and 1889, this building is now throwing open its doors to the public. Imagine that, getting to stroll through Gaudi's imagination. The house is a riot of colors and patterns, with oriental and Moorish influences blending with his unique modernist style. The use of tiles, ironwork, and brickwork shows Gaudi's knack for turning ordinary materials into extraordinary art. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and rightly so. Casa Weekends is not just a building, it's a story of Gaudi's early experiments with design, a narrative that speaks of a genius in the making. Antony Gaudi wasn't just an architect, he was a visionary who etched his imagination into the very stones of Barcelona. Each building we explored is a chapter in his legacy, telling stories of innovation, creativity, and unyielding passion. So, which of these architectural marvels captivated you the most? Share your thoughts, hit the like button if you enjoyed this journey, and subscribe for more amazing stories. Remember, every building has a story, and Gaudis are nothing short of magical.